Welcome to the UNA Baseball Review. Here are your hosts, Coach Mike Keene and Jeff Hodges. Hello and welcome to another edition of the UNA Baseball Review. I'm Jeff Hodges along with UNA Head Baseball Coach Mike Keene. Coach Keene, the UNA Lions 22-7 overall, 6-3 in the Gulf South Conference and in the latest Division II polls up to number three in the nation, which is our highest national ranking since 1999. So congratulations on those successes. But as we've seen in years past, sometimes some early season success can cause a team perhaps to celebrate that a little bit or relax a little bit. And that's certainly not been the case with this year's team. I think uh, this year's team, obviously, with the success they had last year, I think uh, was ready to embrace that opportunity. And, they're, you know, depending on – baseball has some unique polls because you can be top ten – middle and down at the bottom or, or barely even ranked so it's kind of hard to figure you know which pole you're going to be in so I you know I think our guys have handled it real well and I thought they you know they have a lot of focus and continue to do that and uh, they understand uh, last year's team I think and the guys we have so many returning understand how important those midweek games are and that's really the difference between uh, having a good record and staying up there you got those midweek games are just as important as the weekend. The Lions three weeks into the Gulf South Conference schedule and you've won all three of your GSC series this past weekend your first road GSC series of the year you were able to win two out of three at West Georgia. You lost the first game basically in one inning, uh, one bad inning, but you were able to bounce back and win those two pretty impressively. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, we knew going into that game that West Georgia had a good ball club. Obviously, they were leading the GSC at that time. Uh, so we knew we were going to have our work cut out for us. And, you know, we, you know, the way it started, and we were getting guys on base and couldn't hit them in. And then we just kind of had a, an unusual circumstance that kind of changed everything. You know, we have Drew Parker gets uh, ejected in the game. Like I said, it was, to me, it was a, you know, it's always an umpire's judgment, but uh, didn't feel it was uh, you know necessary that he did that. Uh, then all of a sudden, we just kind of had that one inning where everything just snowballed from that inning, and then we never could recover from. But I, you know, I'll give our guys credit from Saturday and Sunday games. We played extremely well. You lost the first game five to two. Four of those runs came in one inning. Um, we were able to come back with a 7-2 to two win in the second game. Michael Watkins won out away from a complete game, but uh, gave up a couple runs. And then Chad Bonner, a near-perfect game in the Sunday finale. Yeah, I think that was really the, the you know, Michael pitched really well, obviously, uh, had a chance for a shutout. And now at the time, West Georgia was, uh, you know, second in hitting, and you know, you know, like 315 as a team. So we knew they were one of the better hitting teams. And to do what he did was pretty impressive. And uh, to get a complete game out of him. And then, uh, and obviously, Chad was tremendous on that game. And uh, he had those three pitches going, so I felt – you know, he was going to be a pretty good game for him, but I'd anticipate, obviously, not a perfect game. But uh, to be that close to one, it was uh, kind of sitting in the dugout, obviously a little disappointed when that hit came out because I've never seen that perfect game. To get that close was, was really just neat to be around it. Your final game of the week, an 8-7 to seven home win over Arkansas Tech, a very good Arkansas Tech team. You got a big lead, were able to hold on for an 8-7 to seven win, but that was another big regional or, you know, yeah, win on the national scale. And it is a regional. They, they still classify as a regional win. And even, you know, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how they did it, but they did include them in the regional year rankings. And uh, so it was a big win. Another good offensive team. Uh, I think it was one of those, as we saw, that, uh, you know, Brantley wasn't quite as sharp as they had been, but you got to give them credit. They're a very good uh, hitting ball club. And I thought our approaches uh, offensively was one of our better approaches of the year, and we were able to get out of it with an 8-7 win. We'll take a quick break, and we'll have more Lion Baseball after this. The UNA Baseball Review is brought to you by TNT Fireworks, Shoals Distributing Budweiser, and by TVA Credit Union of the Shoals. TNT Fireworks is proud to support the University of North Alabama and the Lion Baseball team. Like the UNA Baseball program, TNT Fireworks is committed to excellence. Our product, service, and teamwork are the reasons we are America's number one selling fireworks brand. Check us out at TNTFireworks.com. And remember, if it's not TNT, it's not fireworks. TNT Fireworks encourages the entire Shoals area to support head coach Mike Keene and his UNA Lions by attending a game at Mike D. Lane Field. Roar Lions! Daddy, can I get a puppy, please? Okay, Sam. It's bedtime. Oh, ten more minutes, please. Ten more. Yes. Please. Hey, Daddy. Will you buy some alcohol for my party tonight? We'll be right here at the house. You can even take the keys. Please? Absolutely not. Each time I turn around. Never let me have anything. Don't be a pushover. I hate you. Be a parent. Prevent. Don't provide alcohol to minors. TVA Credit Union was established by the Farm Credit Administration on June 24, 1936, with seven branches full of financial experts offering personal advice. TVA Credit Union offers low rates for mortgages, auto and personal loans, as well as higher rates on savings and CDs. TVA Credit Union is member-owned and operated and now open to the community. TVA Credit Union is everybody's credit union. Give TVA Credit Union a call today, 256-386-3000, or stop by any branch.
Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. Coach Keen, our footage segment today is going to be highlights from a game against Harding at home. And even though Harding no longer remember the GSC, uh, you were able to have a four-game series with them this year, too, there and uh, two here in Florence. And they're nationally ranked uh, on both occasions. And they were able to pull out a couple of two-to-one wins over you on the road. Uh, so them coming here for this home series was a pretty important series for you. Right. It was, uh, you know, when we played them, that was really, that was our third and fourth uh, away games. It was about as our first overnight and going into it. Obviously, it was our first time to play a ranked team. So uh, a little disappointing when we came out with a couple losses. But, uh, you know, they're a good ball club. And, and a lot of times you don't have a week span where you get a chance to kind of redeem yourself and get an opportunity to face the same team and then uh, try to even the series up. And, uh, and, and as it started out, it, it was going to look a little suspect the way we got into it. But uh, like I said, fortunately for us, we uh, offensively came out and swung the bats well. And uh, like everybody got to see, you know, what a, what a good ball club Harding is. And as you go to the highlights here, this is the first of two great comebacks for UNA on the day. The first one, the Lions is going to be down 7-1 to one and come back and win this game 8-7. to seven. But uh, not really playing bad, but boy, your team really showed some resilience in those last few innings. Yeah, it was uh, one of those games where you know, you, you know, we needed to win as far as because we did talk about it. It is a regional opponent. We uh, freshman Riley Sanderson gets his first start of the year. You know, Riley's got really good stuff. Uh, he just hasn't had a lot of opportunities and, and felt it was a good chance to get him out on the mound. And obviously against that kind of an opponent, you don't know what's going to happen. But you know, he came out early and was uh, you could see his stuff was working pretty good, forcing him to swing the bat. and and make him have plays and uh, you know it's one of those things with us with our outfield that runs well and he goes back on the ball and makes a makes a cap a tough catch in right field and again uh, five freshman pitchers on the year and uh, you've been able to use four of them in relief and as you said this is Riley's first appearance uh, but that's one thing your pitching has been so so effective that you really haven't had a lot of opportunities for some of the down the line guys right and then here we get uh, you know Michael does a good job of you know when he gets down and makes contact he runs so well and he's been such a just a really good leadoff uh, hitter this year and and really gets things going. We can get him on, and it really makes things happen. And uh, it was nice to see him up. So we obviously, obviously moved him over already. Then uh, now we got Jake to the plate, pass ball, get him to third base. So you know, kind of a style what we like doing in our ball game: put the pressure on the other team and and try to manufacture runs and get the right guys up. So it was uh, you know trying to get that. We felt we needed to get some run scoring, and here we get a a ball that kind of chops up high. And uh, I think they end up making that, which they don't make many errors. And that was one of the few mistakes they, uh, la the last time we played, they didn't make a mistake. So this was the first time uh, their third baseman, made, he's been very good. He makes a throwing error and we're able to let score one run. And that was a point in the season where Josh was really struggling at the play, but he, he was continuously putting the ball in play and able to drive in runs even during this, this slump. And here's uh, the stretch where you see right here where we uh, we didn't show there, but Harding uh, jumped up on a seven to one, and uh, still and still in a nine inning ball game. You know when you're in the third inning, going into fourth inning, you have a lot of time. You just got to keep plugging away and get base runners on. But one of the things that uh, really not seen here is our pitchers all of a sudden. When you look, they had seven in the third, and they ended up with seven, so they didn't score another run at that point. So it gave our offensive team obviously an opportunity to score more runs, and they were able to just keep plugging away, getting base runners on. You know, get a pitch inside there and get hit. Uh, so again, it's just important. Don't try to hit home runs. Don't try to create more than you can. Uh, just get guys on base and then make some things happen. And that's you know, again, you know, I know Darmall that didn't feel too good when he got hit, but we get him on base and then here comes up another one. Smitty gets a hit. And this was a game. I thought this was a, just such a huge hit at the time because he gets that single up the middle and then all of a sudden it goes from seven to one to seven to three. And now all of a sudden you're starting to change with you know runners at the second and third. So you now it's really putting pressure on them. And having already lost to Harding twice and getting down seven to one, it'd be easy to kind of say, well, this one's in the bag or whatever. But like you said, you know, you guys continue to plug away and you're going to just get run after run in each subsequent inning. Yeah. And then, you know, again, here we go, coming back out there and trying to get there, keep the ball in the game, getting the fly balls and then keeping it at seven. And that's really what, you know, what you need to do when your pitchers come in there and throw strikes. Here you see Jake up in here, Westerhouse, you know, coming in, throwing, gets his sinker, another fly ball. Uh, and like I said, there was a little bit of win that day, and then coming up, and then you know Josh has got a pretty good arm, so they didn't uh, obviously didn't try to score on there, but it, it was a short fly ball, shallow enough to get out, and the next thing you know, get another ground ball out of the inning. So they're getting to keep them at seven, and that's uh, you know that's what uh, Coach Ann talks a lot about our pitchers. When you come out there, you got to you know work in there, come in there, and keep. Uh, they might score early, but let's keep them from scoring late. And they're a team that you know traditionally not scoring a whole lot of runs. I mean, they're pitching in defense, and for them to have seven runs, they had to be feeling pretty good. But as you said, the team keeps chipping away. Right, and again here, you know, they their pitcher, you know, had a little control problem. It's like you know, get another guy hit. But what it does, it uh, for us, it puts another guy on base and gives us an opportunity to steal or bunt or move the runners over. So we're going to continue to do it. There he gets a breaking ball that got up right over the middle of the plate, and uh, got up over there and was able to hit it and. Uh, Advance the runners. We get to third now. Again, we got some things going. Again, first and third. Uh, got an opportunity to make some things happen. So again, we'll keep plugging away. And like I said, the way we competed, 
And then you come up there and we get a fly ball uh, with a runner. Less, I'm sure it's less than two outs there, and so it's deep enough. So get whoever we got running. I think JP, if he's at third, you know, get speed, or that might have been. I'm not sure if that was yes, JP, but uh, you know that way that speed helps because now you get a fly ball that's not maybe that deep, but you're able to score on it. And he did, and Andrew did his job. And then here come up Drew again, who's like I said, he's been very clutch with us with runners in scoring position, and uh, came through here and the ball got by and. Another run. Next thing you know, it's from down seven to one. It's seven to five. So, you know, you got that hit that Michael had, and now here you got Drew Parker coming up with a big hit. Now, I always felt when we're going into that light of the game, when you're only down by two, it's it's definitely within reach right now. And Jacobs coming in, you see a sink working in, going in on the player. So again, he's just attacking the zone, doing a very good job on the mound, continuing to get the outs, and just like I said, throwing strike his little breaking ball that he gets, gets a pop up and. And it gives us an opportunity to get back in there with them just down by two and, and got a chance to keep plugging away. And one thing you're going to see here in the bottom of the six, we're down by two, you get a runner on and you choose to sacrifice them over, try to get a run, at least close the gap because you know you got another at back coming to seventh trying to, instead of trying to get all at once. Yeah, that's a, I, I felt it was one of those we were going to do that. And uh, here's, you know, Jake, I know was kind of getting there with some of his pitches, thought he missed a couple and then he did get another one. He didn't miss that one, hit that home run. Uh, which then again brought us to seven to six, and and I, you know, this again, it, all those hits were big, obviously, to get us back into the. But now, it becomes a one-run ball game, and this was one of those games. Excuse me, I guess I was thinking nine. It was a seven-inning ball game, so uh, obviously, getting that in the six was extremely important. Now, that last at bat, we're rolling down by one. So if we get a lead guy on, we can move a runner over and get a chance to, you know, tie it or opportunity to maybe even take the lead and win the game. And the big thing here in the field, you got to hold them where they are, stay within a run. And you know, again, we kept you know Jacobs in there throwing strikes, hitting the ground ball, and making plays. And you know, that's our defense has been like I said, that's got to continue to be a strength. And, and he's a guy that usually when he's down on the knees, he's going to get ground balls like you see right there, and and let our infield work for him and, and continue to get those outs. And you can see the momentum is really switched in this game from them early, where they're really trying. Now they're not really getting good at bats, not really getting any good swings on it, and and they got a chance to go here. And again, I think here's again where our speed in the outfield really makes a difference. There's a ball that they feel like they got something going and Josh Doyle gets a great jump on the ball and it's right in the gap and if you look up JP was right behind him so I, you know that's that's one of those reasons why you like having speed in the outfield to plays like that. And Josh made a couple great plays going to his left earlier in the, in the game. Yeah, and here again we get the leadoff guy on JP walks uh, so obviously we're going to look at uh, down by one run we're going to be able to bunt him over which we did and then there you see it, he got a fastball over the middle of the plate and uh, that ball was just... Uh, he the got the, the acoustics on that one was pretty impressive. It <laughs> yeah, sounded yeah. like a gunshot or something. Yeah, it really was there. And I think, you know, again, uh, we, you know, the play prior to that, we sack bunt him over and I think that was an important play because to get JP to second base and then uh, what happened is Andrew took some good pitches and waited and uh, he got a fastball right over the middle of the plate. And like I said, you, when you heard it off the bat and the wind was actually blowing out a little bit and it, it jumped and it was a huge win and I thought our intensity and our momentum and how we played and just the, you know how we just kept you know almost sort of like we felt we wanted to win that game and we were going to win that game and there was nothing going to stop us from winning that game. And a great come from behind win on that one. The second game of the doubleheader you fell behind again and rallied and pulled that one out as well. So two huge wins for you, non-conference wins in the middle of the week. We'll have more Lion Baseball after another quick break. The UNA Baseball Review is brought to you by McDonald's and by the Courthouse Racquet Club. Looks like there's an opening for shipping coordinator, and I've got to pick someone. Tough decision. Okay, you could be a rising star, or, but you just ordered a crispy McChicken and a fresh brewed sweet tea for only a buck each off McDonald's dollar menu. So you're smart, right? No, I got nothing. Smart man. Two sevens. Oh, wow. The fox strikes again. The fox strikes again, he's always The simple joy of being smart. Hi, I'm Mike Keen, head baseball coach at the University of North Alabama. Have you ever heard the saying, great baseball players are made in the offseason? As a college baseball coach, I can tell which high school recruits are on a weight program and which ones are not. Help your young athlete reach the top of his sport by training with the personal trainers at the Courthouse Racquet Club. Our five trainers are ready to work at your athlete's pace and your schedule. Try our 3 and Me training program designed for three athletes to work with a trainer and lower the cost to fit any budget. Call Ken Irby at 764-0034 to set up a program designed especially for your young athlete. The Courthouse Racquet Club, proudly serving the Shoals for 30 years. Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. I'm joined now by UNA pitching coach Matt Hancock. 
Coach Hancock, the Lions 22-7, and seven, and a lot of the credit for that success goes to the UNA pitching staff. And last season you had a rare luxury of having the same three guys that started the first series of the season carry all the way through. And so far that's been the case this year. You had Johnny Hornbuckle coming back, Chad Bonner. You've added Michael Watkins. It's really been a good rotation for you so far. Yeah, well, you know, obviously when you can have the three same guys going out there every weekend, it's a huge advantage. And, you know, you had Johnny and Chad coming back, and you knew that they'd probably be solid for us. But being able to add Michael in there, and he's just kind of jumped right in and, and been really consistent for us. And what could be a potential nightmare for a coach is looking at your roster before the season and realizing you have five freshman pitchers. Four of those have really developed into your entire relief staff. And the other, as you saw in the footage earlier, getting his first start. But they've really done a tremendous job for you, and you've been able to count on them. Yeah, they've done a good job. And you know, we, we knew coming in we had a lot of freshmen that had good stuff. It's just a matter of them buying in and really you know, learning what they had to do to get hitters out at this level. And it's, it's a continuous process. And it's you know, one of the reasons I'm starting to get all this gray hair. But they're doing a good job for us. UNA with a 321 team earned run average, and that's uh, pretty impressive. A lot of that uh, credit for that number goes to a guy named Chad Bonner. Um, he's a junior this year for you. He's already got 19 career wins, and he had a pretty special game a couple of weeks back, had 16 strikeouts, which was a school record. Uh, but nothing can compare, I guess, to this past uh, weekend against West Georgia where he came within one strike of a perfect game. Yeah, Chad's been uh, nothing but short of phenomenal. And, you know, people tend to forget his first three outings weren't that good for us this year, and he was just okay, and he was obviously disappointed. But he's – He's one of the harder workers I've been around, and he continues to improve. And um, what he's been able to do the last really three out of four weekends has really been really been special. And even the weekend he was a little bit off against West Alabama, that would have been an easy week for him to fold, easy week for him not to be, you know, have an excuse. But he really battled and gave us, you know, six good innings that day. And putting a pitching staff together as the season develops, kind of an experimental uh, thing. But uh, your roles, trying to find a middle reliever, Brantley Clonch has stepped up to be that guy to eat innings for you. Ben Seabrook really stepped in, doing a great job as a closer. Yeah, you know, both those guys, we knew Brantley was going to throw strikes, which is the biggest thing you want in that uh, middle relief role and a guy that's going to come in, attack the zone and force contact, and hopefully those, you know, contacts result in outs. But, and then Ben in the closing role, he really, you know, kind of showed a lot of confidence in that during the inter-squad scrimmages. And we said, well, you know, he thinks he's pretty good at it, so let's go out there. And he's, he's done nothing but prove that he is pretty good at it. And as we've seen in past years, those middle of the week games are just as important as the weekend games when it comes to the regional rankings and those kind of things. You've had Andrew Hillis really step up this year, and he really got my attention last year. He pitched that great two-hitter against Arkansas Tech, uh, but he's done a phenomenal job for you. Yeah, Andrew has very good stuff. Um, he's got a good fastball, sharp breaking ball, and, and, and has a better changeup than he realizes he has. But um, it's just a matter of, of clicking for Andrew. And last year he got some experience in it, and he's done a very good job of stepping us up and giving us good solid outings on Tuesday so far this year. And again, another part of that balancing act, you want your starters to go as deep as they can, but when they do a great job and get deep in the game this past weekend, you just only need one out from a reliever, but then that's limits your relievers, you know, getting experience. So I know it's something you really have to balance, and some of the other guys are even trying to get opportunities. Yeah, I mean, this year, one thing that's different this year's staff is we have so many arms. Last year, we really only had six or seven guys that we felt really comfortable going with. I feel like this year we have eight, nine, maybe ten guys that could get outs if we have to. And, Trying to get those guys out there, it's not always fair, and it's tough, and they have to continue to get their work done on the side. And um, you know, there's some there's some guys that are throwing the ball really well for us that haven't been out there in a long time. So it's just a matter of trying to you know get the right guys out there at the right time. And you know, from your own experience as a player and now as a pitching coach, how important that depth is come tournament time near the end of the season. Yeah, if we're going to be able to uh, you know achieve the things we want to achieve, we're going to have to have some depth. I mean, we ran into that at regionals last year where we had Jake Sloan on the mound who hadn't picked up a baseball in a month and a half in terms of pitching. And um, you know, that, that kind of bit us late. And you could see our arms started getting a little tired towards the end of last year. So you know, developing that depth is something we're going to have to continue to be aware of and, you know, just start splitting some games up and getting guys out there and getting their arms in shape and making sure, you know, physically we're staying in shape as well. We'll take another quick break and we'll have more Lion Baseball for you after this. The UNA Baseball Review is brought to you by Rick Atonis and by TVA Credit Union at the Shoals. I'm Rick Atoni Valentino and I've got a question for you. Do you like lasagna? Do you like spaghetti? Do you like pizza? Do you like ravioli? Do you like steak marsala? Do you like shrimp spadino? Do you like to have a good time? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you need to go to Riccatoni's in historic downtown Florence. They know how to have fun down there. And the food's great. So remember, it's Riccatoni's Italian Grill. 
in downtown Florence and tell them Rick and Tony Valentino sent you. TVA Credit Union was established by the Farm Credit Administration on June 24, 1936, with seven branches full of financial experts offering personal advice. TVA Credit Union offers low rates for mortgages, auto and personal loans, as well as higher rates on savings and CDs. TVA Credit Union is member owned and operated and now open to the community. TVA Credit Union is everybody's credit union. Give TVA Credit Union a call today, 256-386-3000 or stop by any branch. Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. Coach Keen, this is our segment where we look at some player profiles and we're going to be looking at four of your veteran players today. And that's really been one of the key successes this year is you haven't really had guys drop off. They've done what you expected them to do, needed them to do. And they're guys that are experienced in the Gulf South Conference and the regional now. And they're guys that really need to come through for you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, that was one of the things about this team that we, you know, a lot of times you don't have. You had a lot of guys that have been uh, major role players for us, returning. Uh, yeah, both on the pitching staff and as position players. So, you know, we felt that it, if they could continue to improve and, you know, provide good leadership, it, you know, and give us obviously an opportunity to, to win some games. As we get into our profile segments here, the first player we're going to look at is a local product, Drew Humphrey uh, from Florence here, played at Central and a uh, guy with a lot of speed and it can pinch it, can run for you, can play in the outfield. Yeah, Drew's, uh, you know, obviously he's got good speed. Uh, you know, he was uh, played uh, like a lot of the guys weren't trying to figure out you know, the best lineups to get to you know, the best, you know, opportunity to, to win games. And defense, we've had so many close games this year, you know, defense has really been kind of the priority for uh, getting the guys in the lineup. Uh, and obviously, Drew, uh, when he's a left-handed hitter, throws right, hits left, uh, he usually has good contact, uh, you know, and played a lot. We had him at first going against the right-handed hitters. and uh, But he also, like you said, he if he's not in the game, he gives us a chance to keep his speed late in the game and give us a win a game close because we always got a couple guys that don't run so well in our lineup. So obviously that's an important role. Some people don't realize how important some of the roles that you need to have late in the game, either by a pinch hitter or a pinch runner or, you know, whatever happens. And, and again, Drew's one of those guys, if, uh, you know, a situation comes in, he's had a lot of experience and he's been in our system a while. So he understands what, you know, we need to do to try to win games. And one of several local players on your team this year, and here's another, Andrew Allman. He was in a battle for the third uh, base position going into the season, and he really just seized the opportunity. He's been hitting the ball well, played tremendous defense at times for you this season. And Andrew's, uh, you know, ever since he's been after we redshirted him his first year, and then uh, he's kind of flirted with that. I think it's every year he's had a, uh, in all good programs, you're going to have competition, but he's kind of had a, to battle for that position, and you know he's been competing for a starting position every year. And this year uh, again was no, you know, no difference. He had to compete for a starting position. It's just uh, once he got his opportunity to play this year, uh, you know he jumped in there, and uh, he's really done a good, solid job for us. And you know the big thing I think that you know we always knew he, and he actually you know would, would swing the bats, but I think one of the biggest improvements he's made this year is his consistency and defensively. You know he's more consistent obviously at the plate, but I think that's one of the things that he's really made a difference is uh, at, at this point, he's been so much more consistent defensively this year. And we saw that walk-off home run earlier. That's just one of several key hits, bunts, things he's done in late innings to help you win some ball games. And I think that's one thing Andrew's hitting seven in our lineup, and uh, he's a guy with, you can see what kind of power potential he has having a guy hitting down the lineup. So you can't just throw him a fastball, obviously, over the middle of the plate. And short, uh, shortstop Josh Carpenter, a sophomore. He was GSC Player of the Week a week ago and a guy that's really been hitting the ball well for you, hitting right at 500 with runners in scoring position this season. Yeah, Josh is one of those, uh, you know, one of the things is he, and again, he's just a, a true sophomore for us and obviously started uh, for us as a true freshman. Uh, and, you know, he's starting to get a lot better being as his discipline at the plate. Uh, he's a guy that actually, you know, I told him not necessarily be a pitch guy. He's kind of a zone hitter because it doesn't really kind of matter if it's a changeup, breaking ball, whatever. If it gets in his zone, he usually makes good contact with it. Uh, sometimes he gets a little free with his swinging, but that's what I've noticed recently. He's really laid off some pitches, uh, and I thought he's improved defensively. You know, he'll have a you know a little bit here or there, but I mean, he's made some tremendous plays for us this past weekend, West Georgia. I thought he we had a runner at third, our second base, two down. He makes a diving play, comes up and throws that guy out in a, in a close ball game at that time. So he's. You can see, you know, again, it's like all young guys, you got to kind of just continue getting better and getting more consistent as you continue to, you know, improve. 
There's Josh Sear, uh, junior, his third season starting at first base. And we've mentioned a couple times about the slump he was in offensively, but this past week he drove in 11 runs for you, had two homers and two doubles, and he's also improved defensively this year. I think that's the thing that's really kind of scary to think of what Josh has been hitting, but he's leading us in RBIs. So that, you know, what if he would have been hitting 350? I mean, who knows how it might have been. But, uh, you know, I think he kept, uh, you know, he just kept trying to work hard, kept plugging away. And like we said, he, it wasn't that he's was having, you know, a lot of, bad at bats he just couldn't get put you know three or four good ones in a row and then and, and now I think he's finally got some rhythm got a little more confidence and obviously when you get a more confidence it seems like you're seeing a lot better pitches but uh, Josh is again I think uh, you know when he came in as a freshman the improvements he's made defensively at first base have been tremendous and I you know, that's one thing that kind of gets overlooked he's a very athletic kid you know for his size uh, he moves real well uh, it's just been you know it's just such an asset to our program you know good student uh, you know complete package all those guys are really you know good students a complete package as far as a student athlete He's uh, among the conference leaders and runs batted in with 29, so really doing a great job in that area. Talking about the conference race, Valdosta State in first place right now, 5-1. and one. There's a week off for each of the teams, and they've already had theirs, so that's why uh, they're a little behind us. But UNA at 6-3 and three in second place, and we're the only team that's played three series uh, and won all three so far. So that's something that's really key once you look down the, the pipe at the postseason coming up in the tournament. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of the halfway point. Uh, you know, obviously got a lot of games left, uh, got some very good competition. And, uh, you know, we're coming up this when we didn't have any game scheduled this weekend, we are able to get a game against Tennessee Wesleyan, you know, looking now with their record 26 and five and 21 straight wins. Maybe, maybe it's not the smartest thing to do, but, but I think it's another, gives us another good ball club to play uh, and try to keep some, you know, rhythm as we go down the stretch. Cause obviously the next, uh, we have a midweek, midweek game with uh, uh, Martin Methodist, but then you got Valdosta at Valdosta. And I know that's going to be a tough, a tough weekend. And, uh, you know, if the team's playing well, I mean, you want to keep that going. Like you said, if you were kind of banged up or not playing so well, you might enjoy the weekend off. But uh, having a game and kind of keeping that consistency is something you really need. Yeah, and that's, uh, I think that was what was important. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, that was one of the reasons why we only played a single game with t uh, Tech because, uh, you know, I only had, I didn't have any really games to gain because we haven't really lost that many games. So we had to continue to stay within under our count. But, uh, you know, I think if this GSC race is going to go down to the wire. You know, it's, you're lucky you got one in first, three teams tied. Um, and right now, it's, it, every weekend can change at any time. So that's why it's important to continue to play well. As we mentioned in the opening, UNA number one in the South region. Uh, first time that's happened in quite a while. And uh, part of the key to that, uh, obviously UNA's record, but Delta State and West Florida right up there as well, and Tampa as the top four teams. But early in the season, Valdosta hosted an event with Delta and West Florida, and they pretty well beat up on the Sunshine State teams that are in the region with us, and that really helps UNA as well. Yeah, the, anytime you we're, we're there a lot, their proximity obviously allows them to play the Sunshine. We just are at such a great distance, tough for us to make that trip. But, but with the success of Delta State and West Florida had against those teams, the only one that has any wins against any GSC teams is is basically Tampa. So, you know, and now uh, our only gauge is going to be playing GSC teams. And of course, you have Delta State Series coming up. You have the road trip to Valdosta. So some really tough series on the horizon for you. Yeah, it, and it's, it doesn't get any easier after that because you got to finish up with UAH. And, you know, UNO is a team that no one really knew much about, but uh, obviously they've got some real talent. And of course, the Lions, as we mentioned, 22 and 7. So trying to stay up there in those regional rankings and, you know, who knows how it's going to play out. But uh, with the conference tournament this year, everybody's in it, so anything can happen. Yeah, it's, uh, that's what's going to be kind of different when everybody's going to be in the tournament. So it's going to be one of those. So we've all seen each other, and you're basically going to turn around and just kind of the matchups when you get into the opportunity to play. So like I said, we just hope to stay consistent. Thanks for being with us. Hope to see you again next week. Thank you again for watching the UNA Baseball Review. Please join us again next Sunday at 1130.